The Leafs fall in their first game back from All-Star Weekend. There was some good. There was some bad. We'll break it all down on today's show. We'll take a look at a tight playoff race developing in the Eastern Conference. You're listening to the Lockdown Leafs Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code Locked On NHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Dave, what's up? You were in the building. How was the buzz down at Scotiabank? I mean, it's your typical home game at Scotiabank Arena. There was moments of people were awake, moments of people that just, as soon as the music dropped, everything. It's so weird how it happens. You get the crowd, they get the crowd going with the with the songs and the old games that they do, and as soon as it all drops, hush. Done. It's, it's Done. almost like they. It's almost like they're like the crowd's instructed. Okay, be quiet now. Hockey's being played. Well, it's like it's golf, right? It's almost as if they think they're at a golf yeah. tournament where it's like you got the applause, you got the applause, and then go quiet. Plays in session. It's like no, keep it going. Let's go. Let's get some energy in the building. Uh, that's always going to be a problem in Toronto. Uh, win or lose doesn't even matter. Uh, rarely do you see much energy from. Uh, mm-hmm from you know the the least faithful or whoever attends these games as we know it's not always least faithful who are down there a lot of people like to take digs at the dudes in suits who are down there and uh, not clapping in the in the 100s but uh you got to sit in the 100s today nice little close view uh mm-hmm. for yourself to you get to yourself a nice uh nice soda pop while you were down there dave i had one delivered right to my seat because nice. when I, I Cause you you can because you can. You don't have to I wait can. in line. No, nope. on the app, I will get no. a Bud Light to me. Thank you very much. It was so quick. To, it caught me off guard because, like, I did it just as intermission started. Because, like, why am I going to go out and line up with all those other people? Ordered pleb, it to my seat. plebs. Is that what you're saying? Out with the plebs. Exactly. So I ordered it to my seat, and like I was like uh, having conversations on. All of a sudden, like, it's like, is this, "This your beer?" I'm like, oh, "God, that thing like, came super quick." Nice, nice. Great well, service at Scotia Bank Arena. It was uh it was so so close to continuing your overtime streak. The Maple Leafs did tie it late. John Tavares with a power play goal, got a nice little tip. Uh, and he's got goals in back to back games now. But uh unfortunately, uh Pierre Engvall said, No, 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 let's end this one early. And he ends up with the the game ender, made it three to two with about a minute and a half to go in the game, and uh Leafs, nice opportunity to tie it a couple of times with the net empty, but unable to do so, and they lose the game 3-2 to two in regulation. They've lost now all three games to the New York Islanders. Uh, they get swept in the regular season series here. Uh, not ideal, obviously, because the Islanders, again, a, a team that nests technically is out of the playoffs, outside looking in um right now or or they may have like that final wild card spot they're battling at this point but it's it's a team that toronto should beat and didn't beat and again it's just the leafs kind of shooting themselves in the foot bit sloppy bit slow at the gate um and really struggled to like make simple passes it seemed like all night long struggled in their own end i mean we'll we'll at least give them the benefit of the doubt. It's the first game back from uh, a long layoff. Obviously, they hadn't played since last Saturday, so like well over a week since they had a, a, a game. But at the same time, the Islanders came ready to play. They came ready to play, and they ended up winning this game. They took uh, the full two points, and Toronto uh, obviously goes home with zero points, and they get the loss and fall to a wild card spot as well. Um, overall, though, what uh, would you make of tonight's game? Like, yeah, I, I I think the Leafs had good pressure. They spent a lot of time in the offensive zone, but yeah, like 
opportunities dying on their sticks. I don't know what it is with this team. Just can't convert on on chances. It seems like, um, yeah, like they they did spend quite a bit of time in the offense. It was like the the bottom six, you know, getting possession, getting in the zone, and just not really doing much with it, right? And like they were kept to the perimeter for pretty well most of the night. Like, exactly. Like like Nick Robertson, Max Domi were allowed to skate around the net, skate around that. I'm like, okay, that's fine, Danny. You guys can actually like try to score a goal right now. Like, and the they'll, let, they'll let you do that. Yeah, Go ahead. Exactly. But we're going to collapse in front of the goaltender and you're not going to get anything through. You're not even going to attempt to take shots on net from that, that far. And then when you try mm-hmm. and get it in there, we're going to block it or we're going to, you know, you're going to try and send it around into a corner and we're going to go and we're going to get a puck battle. We're going to win and we're going to turn up ice. Like that's kind of what we saw happen for a lot of tonight. The second line I thought did a pretty good job generating pressure yeah. and generating good looks. But uh, they're still snake bitten. The yeah. uh, the bad juju, the bad puck luck, has followed um, the second line, and uh, the the haircut did nothing, evidently, to uh, to to Tyler Bertuzzi. He had a couple another good opportunities tonight, but was unable to score. Uh, Tavares finally got one late in the game on the power play, a nice little tip play, but he had a couple opportunities in that first period, first few shifts. I thought he was great tonight. We'll get to that a little bit later, probably in our good, bad, and ugly. Um, and even Willie had a couple opportunities. Uh, so that second line I thought was was solid. A um, couple of nice saves by Sorokin, and then a couple of times where it, it just you know the puck either healed off them or they it, it, the puck the pass ended up in their skate and they couldn't get it off in time, or uh, they would just miss the the, the puck and you know shoot wide so it, it was it was a bit of an unlucky night once again for uh for that second line because they probably could have had uh three or four goals tonight realistically mm-hmm. um i thought the goaltenders on both sides played really well i think that was an encouraging start for samsonov you know he was off for over a week and then comes back right away and gives another pretty good performance i was concerned that he got hurt uh there was a save yeah. made in the second period like he, this guy, there were so many tips, plays that looked like the puck was going one way. Puck went in a like just changed direction, like the one on Jord- uh, that bought, went off Giordano. I don't know how he reacted enough to, to get a leg on it, but like he had a few of those saves, and there was one where he really extended out. And you, I noticed that he like didn't get like he didn't get up right away, he kind of stayed in that position. I'm like, I'm kind of hoping that this is just like a cramp or something because mm-hmm. the ref did go and talk to him. I, like I kept my, like the play was going this way. I'm looking at Sam. So I'm like, you better be fine, man. Cause you're playing out of your mind right now. And the ref went and talked to Samson off. He waved them off, said he was good. So it, it may have just been like a, you know, cause he stretched it out and cr- like a cramp or something. So I, I thought that yeah, the goaltending was, was superb tonight. Like Sorokin. He's good, man. He made some I, good. He looked like the old Sorokin tonight. He sure did. Yep, that's usually what happens to the Leafs. Ah, goaltender struggling a little bit. Play the Leafs, you can kind of get yourself back on track. Yeah, that's the antidote. Just play the Leafs. Yeah. That's the antidote. It, it's either going to go really good for you or really bad for you, it seems yeah. like, when, when you're playing Toronto. They're going to light you up like a Christmas tree, or you're going to have a, a, a good night. Mm-hmm. And uh, tonight, Sorokin, um, he definitely had a good night. Um, Pierre Engvall, though. We got to talk about Pierre Engvall for 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 a do second. <laughs> I think we do. Uh, first and foremost, I I I saw on Twitter, so we got the video tribute, and apparently it was eerily silent. There wasn't a lot of claps for Engvall. Is this true? And what was your reaction, Dave? Well, the sol- it did it, uh, obviously always do them in the TV timeouts. Yeah. And the Islanders during the TV timeout, Patrick Wall was drawing up plays like they were preparing for the for the, like out of TV. All of a sudden, like they do the because I think Engvall was just on the ice, but he went on the bench. They throw up the thank you, Pierre Engvall. You know, uh, Mike Ross does the, you know, thank you for your four seasons in Toronto. The camera pans on Engvall, but it was sort of a player blocking him. Mm. It just didn't take not one bit. Nobody. I, I may have heard a couple of applause, but nobody acknowledged. And I'm like, well, that won't come back to bite them at all. Oh, yeah. No, no. It, it didn't take too long for that to happen. Pierre Engvall with the game winning goal. He went to the net, Dave, which is what well, only, 
Oh, that's what Lee fans ask for. That's literally what Lee fans ask for. It's like, dude, you're six foot four. Can you please just go to the net? Just go to the net for once. And he did. Ends up picking up a rebound and slides a five hole on uh, Ilya Samsonov with uh, under two minutes to go. And that ends up being the game winner. Uh, let's take a quick break. Let's come back. We'll chat more about the game, get to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then uh, we'll take a peek at what's going on in the standings. It's been a while since we've looked at what's happening uh, in the playoff race. The the wild card race is pretty tight right now. So why don't we take a look and see where the Leafs stand in terms of the playoff race and the teams all around them uh, as the you know unofficial start to the second half of the season began today. So we'll do all that on the other side. Uh, you're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel. It's North America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing one of your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways to end the season on a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who's going to win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more new customers join today and you'll get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first bet of five dollars or more wins just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up that's fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the locked on network Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano with my co-host Dave Morissuti. We are a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast. You can find uh, the audio version wherever you find your podcast at. You can also find us on YouTube as well. It's Locked On Leafs. We got new episodes coming to you each and every weekday morning, Monday through Friday. So if you haven't yet uh, and you enjoy listening or watching the pod, we do ask that you please subscribe and let us know down below your thoughts on tonight's game. How the Maple Leafs look to you in their first night and how much more do you need to see out of Ilya Samsonov to believe that he is back? Like, is he back to being considered at least a tandem starting goaltender in the NHL? And that's where I want to leave things with you, Dave. I want you to answer that question as well. Did you see things tonight that made you continue, that saw him continue taking steps to you finally being like, all right, he's back. We can trust him in the net again. I, I saw it tonight. Like, there... That game could have been, I mean, both ways. The Leafs could have also scored a lot of goals, but there are a lot of opportunities for the Islanders where guys were left open, you know, tap in place. He was solid. Like, he was making the tough saves. Like, again, the goals that went in, I know some people had a little issue with the first one. That was a bang-bang play. Like, off the post, Barzal was left open, yeah. and he just got the rebound. Like, that's tough for the goalie to react in that time. Second uh, goal, he bit hard on the fake, and he was but, he like, was a little aggressive a really, coming out. Really good play, like that's just a really nice move. Like I mean, really nice move by yeah. the rookie. Uh, was it Kyle McLean? Was that the was that his name there? I just uh, know it was McLean. Yeah, I believe the yeah, first NHL goal, and um, I don't know if you know this or not because I guess you weren't you were there watching the broadcast. I didn't know, but uh, his dad is an, an assistant on the team. Also, so apparently his dad was oh. like sellying hard also off of that goal. And uh, but yeah, like that was just a, a pretty play by the you, you can't fault Sam stuff on that. If anything, I mean, defensively, if you're the power play, you got to know when the guy's coming out of the box here. I heard uh, the taps. And then I, as soon as I see the puck going out of the like, I see Lilligren's kind of like half in, half out. And he decides to go towards the puck. Clutterbuck. Sweet, like pushes it out. I see the puck going on. I'm like, oh, the guy's out of the penalty box, isn't he? Oh, yeah, though, there he is on a breakaway and he scores. I'm like, oh, and, and she, Keith was pissed about it. I don't know if you saw the comments after the game. He wasn't happy. He's pretty much saying, like, this is the NHL. Figure it out. That's Pee Wee stuff that happened because I heard the stick taps. I knew the guy was coming out of the box. Yep. Yep. No, yeah. man, I, I agree. It, it's again, selling out your goaltender. Well, on 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 you know opportunities like that, but uh, it, it was a it was a rough night all around. I would say, not a rough night. A what's the word I'm looking for? A sloppy night. Like it was just a sloppy night, right? The Leafs hadn't played in a while, 
and you know it took them a little bit to get their legs underneath them and then you know making those nonchalant plays also uh like the one we just talked about there coming off of the power play allowing that second goal right after the least responded and, and made it 4-4 didn't take too long for the the islanders to reestablish a lead um off of that kind of broken coverage play by the power play not picking up the man coming out of the box but uh either way samsonov Thought he had a good night again, and uh, we'll see if he gets to start on Wednesday. I, I would imagine, considering he had that big break, I mean, give him another go. Why yeah, not? I think, I, think he, I think he deserves that start. Like, he's – that game, you could not put on Samsonov one bit. I think he did gave him enough of a chance to win that game tonight. So, yeah, I think he deserves the next one. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the Leafs – May have dodged a bullet here. Samsonov might be recovered and uh, could be a usable piece now moving forward. Uh, didn't look like that about six weeks ago. He looked like Swiss cheese and was downright unplayable to the point where they put him on waivers and said, don't even play in the American League because we don't want your confidence to get shot anymore. Yeah. They gave him a week or so to kind of be get back into form. And he's been pretty solid, uh, pretty solid ever since. And, um again tonight's loss certainly not on him thought he was decent uh all right we can continue with the good the bad the ugly i guess samsa we could put as part of the good. good but what else this is what we do after every single leaf game if it's a win we got our three stars if it's a loss it's the good the bad the ugly um so other than Ilya Samsonov, what else did you like about tonight's game what's well, part of the good i like i like john Tavares's game tonight I know he's been taking a lot of uh, a lot of flack and deservingly so. The guy should be scoring more at five of five than he has. But I thought he had, a, especially early on, he had an extra pep in his step. He was going yeah. to the hard areas, like and and Keith was putting him out there, like they, double double shifting him a little bit, especially late in the game. Uh, he went off on, on a change and played with uh, Matthews and Marner at one point. I saw like he he was. I I was he got rewarded for the goal. I think that was like a deserved reward. So I thought he played the right way tonight. Yeah, I did too, man. He was part of my good as well. Um, I, I remember thinking going to the game. I I didn't mention it on the podcast, but I did mention it before I went away when we were talking about who could really use this break before we we got to the end of the that week there. And I said John Tavares, watch for him coming out of the break because. Rest usually does him wonders, whether it's an all-star break or it's right after the start of the season, whatever it is, usually when he gets a, a significant amount of rest, he does a good job of recharging and rejuvenating his body back to, you know, full health, basically. And you saw that tonight, the battle, the compete level, the way that he was putting the shoulder down, battling for loose pucks and the way that he was able to control the puck. He did have a little bit more pep in his step. Um, I thought that he was pretty dominant tonight, especially down low and inside that trapezoid where he's able to cook. And, you know, like you said, he, he had a couple of real good opportunities early in the game, uh, probably should have scored a, a couple of times and then finally got rewarded on the power play with a tip. Um, I thought he was, you know, terrific again, maybe even a little extra motivation playing his former team. Uh, he always does, but what do you have? Six shots on goal played over 21 minutes tonight. Um, yeah, it was six shots, two point night from Johnny T and then, you know, solid in the face off dot as well, which is exactly what you want to see out of, uh, out of John Tavares. So um, good night for him, for sure. Uh, anything else, anyone else that you want to give some props to Simone, bad one, Jake McCabe. I thought those were the only two I could trust to be out there in the defensive zone tonight. They were, yeah, yeah. Simone sure Benoit did get a nice ovation after he blocked that shot. Like, yeah, <laughs> He said well, block, big block shot, right? Big block shot, big hit, big fight. I mean, what what more gets people fired up in Toronto than seeing a guy, you know, put his body on the line like that? Not not a whole lot. That's what you know Leafs Nation loves to see. They Leafs Nation starting to really, really appreciate this guy. Really, yeah. really are. Yeah, they need more of him. Like they need more guys like him on this team. And yeah, uh, like they and, and I will say this: Leafs fans are appreciating him because they did give him the ovation after he blocked the shot. Um, and you could tell like he needed a minute after he blocked that shot to get up, and like the fight too. Like at first, I'm like, oh, I mean, I I knew that the fight was gonna come, and I'm like, Horvat. 
what I, he he showed Borhor that yeah, don't pick a fight with me next time. Let somebody else step in. <laughs> yeah, like, well, kudos I to mean... Borhor Bo for stepping up, but yeah, he got a little lesson there. Yeah, maybe next time Bo looks and looks to Matt Martin and says, "Hey, you think you could take that one next time?" I maybe a little Cal bit of Clutterbuck. Buck. Yeah, Cal Clutterbuck. There's a couple of dudes who probably could have. Could have took that one on, but uh, yeah, hey, I mean, hey, Bo Horvat, like, guy's a captain in the league, man. Like, he's a leader. He he'll drop the mitts if he feels that's necessary. If you if you hurt his guy and you hit his guy, um, you know, that's that's kind of how Bo Horvat's uh, operated, which I, I appreciate. I like Bo Horvat as a player. I think he's uh, he's a solid solid player. Um, yeah, so he certainly deserves to be in the good category. I guess we could transition into the bad, though. You talked about how. McCabe and Benoit were maybe the only two good, you know, defensive pairings who you could rely on. Is that because, uh, you know, the other guys weren't so good tonight? Yeah. Like you look at Riley Brody, Lilligren, Giordano, they, they, it wasn't good from them. Tonight. It wasn't good enough. Like the Riley on the PR, like, come on, man. It's, it's pure Angval. You can defend that guy in front of the net. I know he's big and lanky, but. He's you can defend he's that a teddy bear. We know he's a pet teddy bear. If you if yeah. you try and brush up on him, he like he still thinks the world has COVID. He's he, like, now, don't get he, close to me. He he did throw a hit. I think it was Robertson along the board. Yeah, and I like Nick Robertson. I Nick saw Robertson. a direct view of this, and I'm like, this dude's a freaking fraud. He like he played us for all these years. Now he's throwing hits, scoring goals in front of the net. Where did this guy come from? Well, that's why I said, like, since when does Pierre Engvall go to the net? Well, that's all Leafs yeah. fans wanted. Throw a hit and go to the net. You're six foot four, not freaking five foot eight. Act like it. And all of a sudden, Lou Lamorello and Patrick Waugh get a hold of this guy, and he's throwing his body and he's going to the net. Um, in all seriousness, I mean, yeah, it was, it was, it was like I, I was one of the few like Pierre Engvall supporters when he was here. Um, so I, I'd lie if I said it. I didn't. It didn't tickle me a little bit when that happened. That he, especially after hearing that the uh the the video tribute didn't go over so well the fact that he ended the night with the game winner a little revenge goal i thought was kind of kind of humorous but um either way yeah like he the defending on that goal was was not great and, and overall just like terrible passing tonight by everybody and Couldn't i mean get out of talk about that goal that goal specifically yeah. um like that's just a, a, you know Put it on the tape. Like, what do you do? Like, and that was the issue all night long. Could it make a tape to tape pass to save their lives? Could not do it. It was so annoying. Anytime a, a pass would occur, it'd either be a little bit too high, a little bit too low, roll off the heel, roll off the, the front of the stick. They have to bat it down and they just couldn't get anything in stride. And I thought that really, you know, limited the Leafs chances off the rush, which they didn't really get anything off the rush tonight. And that I believe for, you know, uh, that was why they, they couldn't complete passes to, you know, stay in rhythm. Uh, that was a big issue for me tonight, that the passing, not crisp, which, again, you kind of expect after being off for uh, for nine days, I guess, since they last played uh, a game last weekend against Jets. So somewhat expected, but came back to bite them tonight. That's for sure. It, it just it, it, you just said it there. They come, it comes back to bite them because this team, what they constantly do to themselves is they put – they, they do it to themselves, right? Unable to get a pass out of the zone. Leave a guy open in front of the net. Like, it's things like that that makes you think, can this de – like, we know this defense right now, as it's looking right now, isn't a playoff-ready defense. And it's, it's like, it's mo mostly what they do to themselves, like, at times. And, like, the Barzal goal, what annoyed me about that one was this guy was dips and doodling around in the zone. He passes it off, and nobody takes him. He just gets himself open in the slot. He could have he could have stayed there, and they would have and not have to pay rent for that slot spot in the slot. That's what really annoyed me about that goal is the lack of defensive awareness. And yeah, it's a team it's it's, it's a team mentality in a lot of ways. But I don't know what they're gonna do about it. It's it's it was a huge problem. Yeah, well, they got to figure it out and change things because they're not going to win games if they don't no. defend their own end. Like we we we've we've seen enough this year to know that when the Leafs are winning games and you watch back the tape, 
typically they're defending in their own end in those games. You know, like there, there's not a whole lot of seven, five wins out there anymore for Toronto. Usually they're keeping them pretty low scoring and then they're the ones capitalizing on the mistakes by the opposition or Austin Matthews is putting the team on his back, scoring a few goals. Um, and, and they're scraping away three, one, four, one wins, you know, two, one wins, stuff like that uh, of late. So, uh, yeah, they, they can't be shooting themselves in the foot and then, you know, trailing um and 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 busting defensive coverage left right and center it's it's just not a recipe for success for this team especially when they're still struggling to get that secondary scoring um just you know it's it's always going to be an issue for them again the the only guys who scored tonight mitch marner and and john Tavares, right They're, they're you know two of the core four players didn't get anything from anyone else if you get one more goal from anyone else that's not considered one of the core four guys this is a tie hockey game. Maybe they end up winning this one in overtime. Maybe things are different, but uh, not the case, obviously. Um, still a little snake bitten, I guess. Goes all the way through the uh, the all-star break. Um, but, yeah, it, we kind of combined the bad and the ugly there, didn't we? I, don't know, I mean, for me, the, for me, the ugly between that and the and the goal, the penalty, the guy out of the penalty box. Like, yeah. that's ugly. You can't – like, that, that ultimately, you don't allow that – better chance you win the game because you're not you're again another opportunity you gifted them yeah and uh 11 turnovers by the way uh including the one on the game winner not ideal for the toronto maple leaves all right let's take a break let's reset let's kind of look uh, around the league or at least in the eastern conference uh eastern side of the league as we take a look at the playoff race heading into the unofficial second half of the season that's coming up next here on the locked on leafs Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. It's almost the halfway point in the season. Leaf fans, regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because of Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you got to do is pick whether studs like McKinnon or Crosby or Marner Matthews, McDavid, whoever, will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, though, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Leaf fans. You can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of ter- see Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. All right, Dave. Well, the Leafs kicked off the unofficial second half of the season with a loss to the New York Islanders. And uh, with that loss, I'm just pulling up the standings right now to see exactly what that did uh, in terms of the playoff scenario. But uh, it definitely did not allow them to leapfrog the Tampa Bay Lightning and grasp that third spot in the Atlantic again. So they remain in a wild card spot with just 58 points. That said, when it comes to points percentage, they are technically still in third, but in terms of points, they are currently a hold the first wild card right now in the NHL. And if, uh, well, if, if they stop things right now, like if, you know, a pandemic occurred and COVID happened and they had to stop and then pick up later, later on. Not that that's ever happened before mid season, but uh, they would be playing the Boston Bruins in round one. Uh, so not, would it be uh, the Bruins not or would it be the Rangers. It'd be the Bruins. Cause they got, uh, Oh, sorry. You're right. The Rangers. Cause yeah, they got the first wild card. So they'd be playing the Rangers in I mean, round I thought, one. Like that is any better. Let's be honest. No. Honestly, I'd, I'd rather play the, Bruins and the Rangers. Like I, I know the Bruins are 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 a juggernaut, and uh, but oh, there's something about Blanche Sturkin and Jacob Truba, Adam Fox, Panarin. I don't know, man. That Rangers squad for me is uh, they're 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 
beast. That's a scary, scary team. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's just take a look at the entire conference and where things stand right now. So scroll up to the top there, Dave, and we'll just kind of take a peek and go team by team. Um, so the Boston Bruins right now, they're leading in the Atlantic division. They've got uh, they're 31, nine and nine with 71 points, a plus 45 goal differential, which is just insane. Plus 45 goal differential, I believe is very much uh, top in the Eastern conference, yeah. um, which I think is second in the NHL. Yeah. Second to just I think the Canucks are first. Yeah. They're plus 59, almost plus 60 goal oh differential. No, oh, it's insane what the Canucks, <laughs> uh, the Canucks are doing this year and they got better by adding Lindholm. But anyway, uh, the Boston Bruins still pretty good team, man. They've won seven or last 10 games. They won a couple leading into the all-star break and they still sit right up at the tippy top of the Eastern conference, picking up pretty well, right where they left off last year. So nothing's changed there. Boston still a uh, juggernaut of a hockey squad. The Florida Panthers, um, second place. So unlike Florida last year, where it took a late run for them to even make the playoffs, uh, they picked up right where they left off in the Stanley Cup final, and they've been a pretty solid squad right from pillar to post and currently second in the Atlantic. They're chasing down the Boston Bruins. You think they can catch them? Like, Do you, do you believe in the Panthers, or do you believe that uh, the Bruins maybe tail off a little bit or – you still would you put your money on Boston no, still winning this division? I'd probably put my money on Boston, but you know what? Florida's gone on runs, man. They've gone on win streaks that give. I, I wouldn't say it's a like. I wouldn't. Say, I, I would say I'm like sixty percent confident Boston will will get top spot. I think the Panthers they go on a run. I don't know how many games they they have left against the Bruins too. Uh, I think that's that would, could be a bigger factor if they have those. Uh, you know, head to head matchups that could be a potential area where they could pass them, but yeah, the Panthers are capable of going on a run like that, and it's uh, it's probably very frustrating if you're a Leafs fan to see where the Panthers are right now. So, we all know what Sam Reinhardt's doing, who currently sits just uh, three goals back of Austin Matthews for the uh, goal scoring lead. Which you think about the season that Austin Matthews is having 40 by February is just outrageous. Sam Reinhardt's right behind him. Like he's a hat trick away from tying up Austin Matthews at this point. It's it's actually wild really? what uh, the year that Reinhardt's having. So good for him. But what a lot of people are sleeping on is how good of a stretch Matt Kachuk has had of late. He kind of struggled earlier in the season, Dave. Just twenty four points his yeah. first thirty four games. I saw a tweet today through his last fifteen games. You know how many points he has? Uh, a lot <laughs> 11 goals and 27 points in his last oh. 15 games. So Matt Kachuk is rounding back into form as well. So the Panthers, I don't think they're going anywhere. They're still probably going to end up locking up uh, one of those top two spots, which means honestly, Dave, I think it's going to be a fight between Tampa and, and Toronto for that third place spot, which is, I mean, means again, Toronto and Florida might end up meeting in round. Well, I guess they met in round two last year, but might be Toronto, Florida in round one um, this year. That that's that's gonna be tough. Like we 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 like if you ask a lot of people, they would be worried about playing the Panthers because that's the team that's built for playoff hockey. We just saw yeah, it. it. Just saw it. Literally just saw it. And Bobrovsky. Plays uh, as good as he did last year, or is he as good as he did in the uh, All Star game? Yeah, it's a good goalie and a tough goalie to beat, that's for sure. Um, but Tampa, Tampa's hanging in, man. Tampa, they're a team that is starting to kind of turn the corner as well. They've won eight of their last 10 games, they won three in a row heading into the All Star break, and they were picking up points. And they've now leapfrogged Toronto, who's you know dropped some games here. Um, so the, the the lightning now that Vasilevsky's back and healthy, they're rolling too. Uh, it's it's not going to be easy for Toronto, man. It's really not when you look at at you know the 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 amount of points that they've left on the table. And we talked about how much it was going to come back to bite them in the ass. You know, losing twice to to Chicago, losing to Pittsburgh. They've now lost three games to the Islanders. Like dropping those points, gonna come back to bite them. And we're not even through. How many games are they now? 48 games. So we're not even through 50 games and they're not even in a top three guaranteed 
you know, Atlantic spot. Now they're kind of fighting for, for a wild card spot and it's going to be between them and, and Tampa um, to see who can, you know, come away with a, a guaranteed spot. But I don't know. Like, like I said, when we talked about it earlier, if you're Toronto, who would you rather play Florida or the Rangers? I, I don't know. Like they're all going to be tough opponents, Boston, yeah. Florida, New York, either way, Toronto, they're not going to have home ice advantage unless they go on an absolute run and one of these teams fall off, obviously. Um, but chances are they finish with either the third spot in the Atlantic or that uh, top wild card spot, and they might have to cross over, which might be an easier path if they can get through round one. Um, but, you know, Toronto's, yeah, they're going to be in a dogfight down the stretch pretty much is is what we're getting at. And with a loss to the Islanders tonight, they're only four points up on New York for a playoff spot. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's going to be tough. I mean, for the Leafs, when you look at maybe it might be a good thing that they're fighting for a spot and they're going to be a little battle tested. But at the same time, the reason why they're in this position right now is because they're not playing good enough, especially mm. at home. I think that's the biggest. I think they're like they've had like two wins in the last 10 games at home, I think is what I heard. Like that's that's inexcusable. You need to win those games at home if you want to have any chance of being you know, a playoff team, a contending team. Yeah. I think with tonight's loss, they now uh, at home, they've moved to 11, 10 and two. So like, that's technically uh, like that's under 500. You've that's under 500. There, there's no way to look you've at lost that. more games than you've won at home. Like that's inex- yeah. that's just inexcusable. Yeah. You, you got to figure out how to win games in your own barn. I, I, I don't understand it. Last year, they were great at home and, and it's just one of those things, but they got to figure it out, man, or else uh, it's, you know, it's, they're not guaranteed a playoff spot this year. It's not guaranteed. They're going to have to fight for it. And they didn't bank enough points early in the season no. where, you know, they can kind of coast the rest of the way. It's, it's definitely going to be a fight and look, they, they still have to even prove to Brad Trilliving that they're worth, you know, going out and addressing all these needs that they have to even build up this team to go on a run. Uh, I mean, if he doesn't do that and there's still a wild card team come the playoff or come trade deadline, I'm not sure he does go all in. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. The teams that are chasing the Maple Leafs, though, you've got the Red Wings with 58 points through 50 games. You've got the Islanders who just beat the Leafs tonight, 54 points through 50 games. You've got Pittsburgh. You've got the Devils. You've got the Capitals all with 51 points and less games played than the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, and then it kind of falls off from there. You've got Buffalo, Montreal, Ottawa, and Columbus all sub-50 points, probably out of the playoff race. But any of those teams from Toronto down to, I mean, Washington by points, they're still within range, but I don't like where they're heading. Um, they, they, I guess oh, Kuznets off for a little while. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, that news came out today that he's going to be entering the player assistance program. So no Kuznets off. You've got OV who's struggling. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's not a good spot. Obviously, we know that. Uh, Nick Backstrom's not there. So the Capitals, eh, they're kind of falling out of it a little bit. But, I mean, Toronto, Detroit, New York, Pittsburgh, New Jersey, those teams are still battling, I think. And all five of them uh, are hoping to make the playoffs this year. And, uh, you know, Toronto's going to have to win games against all those teams going forward uh, and 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 many, many more because they're going to be on the heels and, and they've got games in hand also on Toronto. Pittsburgh's got two in hand. The Devils have one in hand. Uh, Toronto's got two in hand on Detroit and New York, I guess. But still, they're going to have to figure out a way to pick up some wins so that it doesn't get too, too tight. Because, I mean, they lose three or four in a row and Pittsburgh wins a couple. And all of a sudden, you know, there's only two or three points between you being the top dog in the wild card race and you being, you know, fourth in the wild card race and out of a playoff spot. So uh, hopefully they can pick it up as soon as possible here dave yeah it's they they don't have there's no really no margin for error let's just say yeah. they have to they got to start picking it up and uh it's not going to get easy they got the dallas stars next they got a little pesky senators coming up so do you want to make a prediction as Uh-oh. to who the final eight teams will be 
we'll make this prediction. It is as of now, well, it's late February 5th, but I guess the podcast will be released February 6th. So call our shot on February 6th. What do you think? Sure. All right. How do you think it shakes out? I think in the Atlantic, I think it's going to be the Bruins, the Panthers, and I think the Leafs will slide back up into third. I think the Lightning will come back to earth a little bit here. Um, but I think the Lightning will still maintain the first wild card spot. I think in the Metro, yeah, I think the Rangers, the Hurricanes, man, I I don't know about the Flyers now. Yeah, I mean, they've lost five in a row, and now with Carter Hart not being on the team, uh, I I think I, the, I think the Islanders can. I think I'm putting the Islanders in that third spot right now, and I think the final man, it, like if either one of the Penguins or the Devils decide to start playing to their potential, they could move up. But until it, the Devils get a goaltender and the Penguins not score on their own net, I don't even think we talked about that one. Um, <laughs> like. I, I think that I think the Flyers and the I think it's going to be a dogfight between the Islanders, the Penguins, and the Devils. I think the I, Flyers are going to get out of it. Yeah, I agree. I, I could even see them just kind of selling pieces off and and you know, be the smart thing just to do. looking forward to next season. Try and put the Carter Hart situation in the rearview mirror, cut ties with that, and uh, you know, try and move forward. Um, you know, continue that rebuild that they're in because without a, a goaltender, I don't see them really doing a whole lot here anyways. So I, I think the Flyers, who again have lost five in a row anyways, uh, I think they continue to skid throughout the rest of the, the second half here. I actually like the either the Penguins or the Devils. I, I'm not so sure that the Islanders take that spot. I, I think I probably would, would give it to – I'm going to give it to Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh wins that spot. So I'm with you when it comes to Boston, Florida, Toronto for one, two, three in the Atlantic. Uh, but I think New York – Carolina and then Pittsburgh claims that third spot. And then uh, I'll also give Tampa that top wild card seed. And uh, look, man, I, I think the dirt, the, the devils eventually got to crawl out of this. Gotta right. Like they're just such a good team and they can stay healthy. If they add a goaltender, I mean, if, if I was the devils, man, would I ever be picking up the phone and calling Calgary? Like they already moved on Lindholm. So you know that they're 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 selling off now. They're probably gonna end up trading away Chris Tanev. Also, call them and say what would it take to get Markstrom? What would it take to get Markstrom? Because they get a goalie in New Jersey, that's a whole different situation. That's what I'd be doing if I was uh, if I was the Devils GM right now. But we'll see. We'll see what they can do. Uh, but again, they're what three point. It's back of a playoff spot as we as we uh, speak technically or five points out of a playoff spot, um, just five points back of the Flyers uh, in that third uh, third spot. But they got points in hand, or they had three games in hand. So if they win those games in hand, they're actually better than the Flyers. They're not too far off mm-hmm. in terms of points percentage when it comes to the Flyers, them and Pittsburgh. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the final half of the season shakes out. But uh, to recap. I like Boston, Florida, Toronto to finish out one, two, three in the Atlantic. I like the Rangers, the Hurricanes, and the Penguins to finish one, two, three in the Metro. And then I like for Tampa and the Devils to finish uh, one, two in the wild card. How did you have it? Yeah, it's, I, I would say it's pretty similar. Um, I say if the Devils don't improve their goaltending, I think that the Islanders can hold on to that second one. But I think, yeah, the Devils, that, that's a team that's prime for they're going to push at the deadline. I think they see there's opportunity there for themselves. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that was the only one that we really differed much on, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. All right, buddy. That'll do it for us. Oh, uh, update on David Camp. We want to do that on tomorrow's show. We'll do it on tomorrow's show. All right, come back tomorrow for an update on David Camp. Uh, we'll talk about that and more. Dallas coming to town, so we'll preview that game as well. Uh, that's going to do it for us here today on the podcast, though. I'd like to thank you for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore 
more suiting and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you enjoyed the show, go ahead, leave a like and a comment down below your thoughts on the team your thoughts how do things shake out in the eastern conference playoff race would love to hear your opinions and your predictions down below in the comment section as well or you know get social with us uh, on twitter we just gave you our uh, our twitters as well all right we'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow but until then keep it locked right here on locked on leafs